Hello guys, today I am going to be showing you how you can use multiple threads inside of your bucket plugin. If you are familiar with threads in Java, you may already know that there is a thread class that is typically used for creating new threads. However, Bucket has their own implementation of this, so I'm going to be using that. The reason behind this is because, let's say our plugin crashes and we're unable to close all the threads that we've created. Whenever we start the plugin up again, it's just going to create even more threads, leaving those previous threads open, and it's going to cause a memory leak. So we don't want this to happen. We're going to be using bucket runnables to run tasks asynchronously. Let's talk about why you would want to do something like this. Well, if you have a large calculation that needs to be made or just a lot of code that needs to be run in general, it may end up slowing down the main thread. For those of you who don't know how the main thread of bucket works, essentially every single second, there are 20 intervals. And within every single interval, all the plugins on your server have to run their code. If the plugin is still running that code, by the time it is ready to start the next tick, your server is going to be running behind. That is what causes lag on a server. So your code is holding up the main thread while the main thread is trying to get going because it knows it has stuff to do. So what you do to work around this is you move that large chunk of code that needs to be run to its own thread so it can run independently of the server's thread. And then whenever that thread is done, it can send the information back over to the main thread and you can do whatever you need to do on the main thread. But whenever you're using multiple threads, you need to be super, super careful. Most bucket methods cannot be run on a second thread. It has to be done on the main thread. What we're going to have to do is pass the information that we want to use over to a second thread, and then when that thread is done running, pass the information that we gained back over to the main thread and then run the rest of the code. So I am going to be using the chunk load event today because this event runs many times second and it will be a good indication of whether or not we're causing lag to the server or not. So I'm going to go ahead and create a listener for the chunk load event. Luckily for us, Bucket has a thread safe interface for our chunk class. What this means is all the values within this interface are thread safe. Because the chunk class is also an interface, I can't show you what this method does. But essentially, it takes all the values that you could normally get from a normal chunk and makes them constant. So it's basically like taking a picture of the chunk at a one point in time and then saving that separately. So that means the world no longer has access to this chunk snapshot and it will no longer be updated. With this get chunk snapshot method, you can optionally pass in three booleans. I'm using the one that does not require any arguments. If you do use the one that uses three booleans, the first one is going to be whether or not you want to include the max y value for every coordinate. The second is going to be whether or not you want to include the biome for every coordinate. And the third argument is going to be whether or not you want to include the temperature and weather for every coordinate. I don't need access to those values in this scenario, so I'm not going to be using that. What I'm looking to do is loop through every block in this chunk and detect if there are any ORs in the chunk. And if there are, I'm going to add them to a counter and I'm going to broadcast the outcome of every single chunk to the whole server. So let's start. Actually, we're not going to be beginning right here. We are actually going to be making another class. While we could declare our snapshot variable as global so we can use it inside of a nested class, this load event is going to be running much, much faster than our calculations. So I want to pass an individual snapshot to an individual thread where it's going to get calculated and it's going to do the same thing many times over. If you wanted to make it so that your plugin only opens one extra thread at a time, what you could do is check to see if the task is already running and if it is, add the snapshot to a queue. And then whenever that task is done running, run another task with the next one inside of the queue. I don't care about having a bunch of threads open, so I am just going to do it the lazy way. So let us begin. In order to create a new thread with the bucket API, you need to create a bucket runnable. You can do it right here inside of a nested class, but as I said, in this scenario, it will not work for us because this chunk load event is going to be firing many, many times. So we're going to create a new thread every single time this chunk load event runs. We're going to create a new class that's going to extend bucket runnable. I'm just going to name this chunk calc. So we can do our calculations inside of this class. And this class needs to extend bucket runnable. 
and then we can go ahead and implement the run method and then we're also going to create a constructor so we can pass in our chunk snapshot. So now that we have our snapshot in our class it's going to be running on a separate thread we can go ahead and do whatever we want to it. So I'm going to create a couple of nested for loops so I can loop through every single block in the chunk. If you are using this in your actual plugin you might want to replace this with the world's max height but I'm just going to hard code it because it does not matter in this scenario. So what I'm going to do to check to see if any ors are in this chunk I'm going to loop through every single block and if the blocks material name contains the word or then I'm going to add that material to a list and I'm going to print out the list after I'm done looping through all the blocks. Now every single time we find an or it's going to add that or to our or count and then what we want to do I want to broadcast this to everybody on the server. There's one problem since we're on a separate thread I can't use any bucket method so how am I going to get this hash map back to somewhere I can use it? Well that's where you create another runnable. You can do that inside of another class, just like we did for this one, or you can just do it like I'm about to do it right now. We're going to create a new bucket runnable, and then implement our method run, and then in here, we're going to put our code that we want to run on the main thread. And just like that, we are able to print out the message, but we're not done yet. We need to come down here before the semicolon, and run the method run task and then pass in an instance of your plugin which I'm going to have to pass into this runnable so I can pass into that. I just want to add that you should be cautious when you're using global variables inside of a runnable because if this variable gets updated by another method it's not going to run the previous variable inside of this code it's going to run the updated one so just use caution whenever you're doing that. Since I'm making a new instance of this class for every single chunk that will not be able to get interfered with. So now we need to actually run this method on another thread. So let's go back to our listener here. And inside of here, we're going to create a new instance of that class we just made. If you're only running one instance of this runnable at a time, you want to save the ID of this runnable to a variable and then check to see if that's already running. As I said before, I'm lazy, so I'm just going to do this. And before our semicolon, we're going to type in dot run task asynchronously, pass in an instance of our plugin, and now this is running on a separate thread. Inside of your on disable, it's probably a good idea to close all your threads just to make sure that nothing else is running whenever the server stops. So to do this, we can get the server, and then we can get the scheduler, and then we can cancel tasks and input our plugin. Just like that, all our plugins tasks are going to be canceled. And as you can see, it ran through every single chunk and got all the ors inside of those chunks. For some reason, these chunks had no ors. Ah, these are probably the end chunks, and there's no ors in the end. But as you can see, our overworld chunks are right here, and our nether chunks are right here. And I'm going to go ahead and go into the server and run this a whole bunch of times by just flying around the world. And you will see that it does not decrease the ticks per second at all. And now if I type slash TPS, you can see, well, I don't know if you saw it actually because it went away so fast, but we are at 20 ticks for the last minute, 5 minutes, and 20 minutes. So that means we're not experiencing any server lag and that all our calculations are being done on a separate thread. And if you want even more evidence of that, you can come over here to the debugger, go ahead and stop your code at any point. And then up here you can see our threads and we can probably find the one that we just made here. If we go through all of these. All right, I actually can't find our thread, so I'm not even gonna bother looking for it. Anyways, guys, if this helped you out, make sure you leave a like. If you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know down in the comments below. And if you had any issues while you were making the plugin, come join my Discord. Me and a bunch of other developers are over there ready to help you. Anyways, that's all for today. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Nice, the mutt's nuts, in fact.